What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included. Coming straight in with the extension of the thermal power plant. If you need to see how that's done by the way, let me know. It's pretty painful, I'll be honest. Um, it takes me a couple of tries. You can see I have separated that top section into three different segments with their own thermostat just to make sure that it keeps the various areas at the right temperature. My main concern there is if I only do it on one, then it won't, of course, actually help. We are getting some blowback from the stuff melting at the top, which is the liquids that I'm just trying to do here. Also, you can see in the chamber there where the natural gas geysers were, there's a third that was cleared out from the bottom that I was just at, and I just teleported it over. So this liquid there is basically the ice that is melting from the top of the world where we're using it to cool the gases originally, which we're no longer doing. Um, and the liquid for the, um, the thermo room. But the gases, as you can see now from this section here, go up to the same place. They get cooled down and then sent into the base because what was happening is this natural gas is actually being stored inside the base still. I probably should move it, then it wouldn't matter. But for now it does. You can see down there the storage that we've done from the very beginning really. Um, and it was too warm for the base. So now I'm sending it up. It's going across the same place as where the ethanol is being cooled down. Cools the gas down to around 30 degrees, 25 to 30 degrees. And then it goes into the base to be stored and used at a later date. The main power source is still the thermo. That is, by design, what I wanted to do from the very beginning. Um, and then the natural gas is a backup. Now, what was happening was the natural gas was basically draining because there was just not enough power coming out of the thermal. So I've extended that, and that's now doing it so that it still runs out, but the natural gas kicks in, tops it up, and then resets and rinse and repeat. What I want to look at now, I am happy with that. Uh, we will take a quick look at the natural gas setup. Nice and simple, though. It's just three geysers in one platform. I made it a vacuum before, so the only thing that is in there is natural gas, and that can be sorted. Our oxygen generation from this chamber here, you can see, is working very, very well. More than enough to support the base. All we need to do is make sure we don't run out of the liquids, and we're good. There you can see the third one is in the center. And then the pump just takes it out, sends it up to the top of the map, it gets cooled, it comes back down, then stored to be used whenever we need it to be. I do have, I think, two or three of the duplicates struggling with zombie spores at the minute. So I need to get them resolved. They're very, very slow, as you can see. Uh, but we'll get that cleared up, no problem. So now we can actually see where the gases are going. You can see they're being pumped out of there. But instead of going just out of there and straight down into the base... I send them up, up here, and of course there is a shut-off valve along each of those corner segments. Each of those are connected to a element, sorry, a gas uh, thermometer, and all it's doing is looking for the gas to be less than 40 degrees. If it's less than 40 degrees, it will then send it to the base. If it's more than 40 degrees, it sends it to the next segment, and there's about seven, eight segments, I think, in total you can see. Just doing exactly the same thing. It's using a reasonable amount of electricity, but I needed to make sure that the gas, and there you can see it working. So in most cases, it's getting to that third one there. Of course, the reaction of that is some of the ice is melting, specifically polluted ice, because that will melt first. And that is then falling down. So I've just created a cradle there. You can see the top is nice and clean and ready for rocket platforms, etc. When we get there. Um, but I just put a little cradle underneath it to catch the liquid so we don't keep falling down here into the base because very shortly we're going to be building the mega farm and I don't want crap falling on me while I'm doing that. The tiles there for the wallpaper you may have noticed have changed. I've just gone through again and made sure I've got everything that I have uh, so I get a better option for support of colours. And again you can see there they are slowly working at building that platform. Overall gas overlay supporting the base. You can see the base is very nicely darkened blue there. So we have a very good concept there. Working from that generator, the electrolyzer that we have. The one on the left will be ripped out. The new one on the right is doing all the work anyway. <clears throat> Especially pumping it down to the lower part of the base. Helps push the CO2 out. So this giant section here now is going to become, or the location for 
the new mega farms. Uh, one floor per crop. Haven't really decided yet, but I do by the end, of course, what we're going to be growing. I'm going to go hydroponic farm so that we can cover every basis. So whatever liquid we need, we can pump in. If it doesn't need a liquid, we'll just put pipes there and it'll be fine. Empty pipes still work. You don't need to put any liquid in. Um, and of course, I'm going to surround each of the rows with a layer of insulation so that regardless of what's being grown i know that uh, the plants can so like the balm lilies which need to be i think 35 to 80 degrees um and then the others need to be like 25 degrees so i can just get the room set i can put a cooling system in or a heating system in and just each room is segregated it's my plan anyway let's see how uh, well that comes along now this is my original plan you can see it's not done correctly though because i need to space them out by one more block to allow for the insulation so we'll jump to that that's better <clears throat> so after each floor there's an insulation tile then three blocks for the plant and then the hydroponics and then below that goes another insulation and that will allow us then to put an insulation door on the far left hand side to get into the room so that the temperatures remain reasonably stable we can have a cold room and a hot room right next to each other and it shouldn't cause issues for the crops then on the platform between the entrance to the farms and the, and it fits nicely into that as well look uh, into that ladder i will put some air tiles to allow the air to flow through there i won't make a vacuum and that should keep all of the temperatures sort of equalized because the gases passing through there will of course do the job for us so there's the basic concept there's a lot of building to do here i will set these at a much higher priority making sure here that there's two gaps for the doors and the doors will be the electrified insulated doors like so and all i need to do now is give them a path to get through here and to each of the different floors which will need a door per floor obviously um, and then i've put the air towels at the top there so that this bottom section and then that top little section there where the light switch is uh, or actually it's not a light switch it's a switch for the water but it's all connected so here we go that is each of the floors done you can see the air tiles between i, I ripped out the uh, next to the ladder there was another insulation block i've took that out there's no need for it to be there anymore and then the three air tiles across to the actual individual farms and then i'm just going to do a time lapse because it's going to take a while for them to build out of course i'm going to get them set to level nine in sort of importance but it still takes them a while because there's a lot of walking they have to do i could put another door in but there's no point yet so let's see how this goes enjoy be right back Wow, so for me that took a while, a couple of cycles as well actually, longer than I thought it was going to do, but for you hopefully it wasn't too bad, I spent it all by 20 times. So here we can see now we have the basis of what I want, obviously that top section there needs closing, but the top, very top line, there is a bit of an extra gap, four in fact, that is because I'm going to use that for the bristle berries, which means I need to put the light bulbs in, so that's what the extra height block is for. Obviously, the higher you move them, the more area they cover, so it's just more efficient to do it that way. I could have done it another block up, actually, but it doesn't matter. So just quickly go along here, and you're just making sure that the right edge of the light beam matches up with the left edge to make sure you cover all bases there. If any square is left, then obviously the bristle berry will not grow. And then there's last three blocks there, so I'll just cover it with spare light. Get them wide in. They're only 10 watts each, so it's not the end of the world. We're not quite ready yet, so what we need to do is get the structure in, i.e. the lights. These tiles need the plumbing in as well. Bristleberry needs water. Mealwood, which is the second row down, needs nothing, so we'll just put empty pipes there. But all of these chambers need vacuum in as well. 
and then I will put in the corresponding gas to what the plant needs. Now, bristleberry can be one of three. Obviously, oxygen, polluted oxygen, and carbon dioxide. I'm going to use carbon dioxide where I can, because that is a waste gas for us, in my opinion. I'm not going to use oxygen, because we need that. So, oxygen for the bristleberries. Oxygen for the mealwood. Uh, I'm also going to try and get some balm lilies grown, but you need chlorine for that, and we do have a little bit stored, or enough stored anyway. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I use all of them apart from the very bottom one. Now, there are quite a few plants to unlock still. We'll find the seeds for and we'll get to that. I can extend it a little bit. The, the There is a couple of things in the way, but we can move them all if we really need to. I'm not going to do a reed farm because we already have loads of reed fibers stored still. A couple of hundred, I believe. Um, so for now, I'm not going to bother with those, and that's simple to set up anyway, and it just needs polluted water, so we can get to that if we need to. For now, I'm just going to chuck in the pumps. All of these pumps are there to vacuum the chambers. As soon as the chambers are vacuumed, then I can look at getting the gases into the chambers from wherever I've got them stored. And there we go for... That's the second to last one, and that's where we put in the grub grub plant. Now, if I had any sweet eels, I could put the sweet eels in there and make the plants much more potent in terms of calories, but I don't think I have. I might have accidentally killed them. I need to check. We'll see. Or I'll have to steal some from another asteroid. Then above that is the lily seed. You can see going in there, so we're going to need chlorine in there and a much higher temperature. Above that is the mushrooms. Nice and easy to grow. All you need to do is provide them carbon dioxide and dark, which that's fine. We, it's a concealed room with no entrance and no lighting, so no problem. Um, and then above that is the millwood, which has already gone in. They're looking almost, they're looking happy with themselves anyway. Uh, and then, of course, the top one is the bristleberry. Now, the top two chambers, bristleberry and the, the uh, millwood, I have already put carbon dioxide in there because it was nice and easy. The carbon dioxide is just literally to the left hand side there. What we'll need to contend with is two things, the gases and then the temperature. Now, temperature-wise, I've got a couple of ways of doing it. I can steal the heat from the electrolyzer room right above. There's also a lot of heat if I need it from the three uh, natural gas vents above. And if I need cooling, I can just hack into the cooling system that we already have. But I don't think we'll need to do any cooling. I think it's heating that we require. And all I'm going to do is st stick a stop valve on each floor and then wire that to a thermometer or maybe, yeah, two thermometers with an OR gate. Hopefully it makes sense what I'm trying to say. It's reasonably simple. We'll see it shortly. You can see here I'm just trying to get now some more of the carbon dioxide out uh, because I didn't realise I was going to... I forgot about the mushrooms, if I'm honest. So that's why I cleared everything up and then needed it again. And even though I vacuum these all out, you can see they're getting filled with natural gas because we've got duplicants that fart a lot. Uh, literally, it's the, the negative spec, so they keep going and dropping natural gas everywhere. But it's such a small amount, as soon as I put the right gas in there, it'll disappear. Uh, each floor, I'm going to just try and make it a little bit better for them. Now, their eyes are going to have to suffer because I really can't be bothered to do the Atmo suit. But I'm going to give them the gas mask. So to go into each of these farms, there is the option of two gas masks. So that means two duplicates can go in each room and they'll be able to breathe no problem. Of course, the chlorine one, they're going to have a bad eye day, but I might upgrade just the chlorine one to an Atmo suit once I've got it up and running and I'm happy that it's, so, it's all okay and, and how I want it, basically. So we can see there the carbon dioxide is pushing into that third level where the mushrooms are and as it pushes across to the right, moving the fart fart gas away or the natural gas as it is called in the game um, you can see that the mushrooms are happy and starting to grow so we have bristleberries growing we have the mealwood apart from a few there that have got a bit of an issue with temperature we haven't looked at we haven't done the temperature thing yet so that's why that's not fixed the fungal stuff the mushrooms they're looking okay and of course the balm lilies they're going to take a while because we need chlorine in there and a lot more heat minimum 35 degrees maximum 80 degrees i'd like to try and get somewhere in the middle we'll see as long as it doesn't leach out to the other rooms which it shouldn't the grub grubs are okay as well they just need to be fertilized and watered uh, i don't know if i've done the plumbing for that yet there's a lot of warnings up on the screen 
The masks are going in slowly. Now I need 12, I believe, in total. And I've only got eight, so I need to make four more. But they're not that expensive. I've disabled the building so that uh, the duplicates can still go in. It makes it a bit horrible for them, but I need my stuff built. So, yeah. Suck it up, cupcake. And then now just pushing in row four with the chlorine. Nice, pretty green colour. As soon as it gets there, there it goes. So that'll immediately push in. It's a vacuum, so you can see it's very quickly spreading across. It just have to have a certain amount of pressure. But to be honest, it's going to be more than enough in there. If it uses it up, then I'll put more in at a later date. And we can set that up automatically, no problem. But I'm not convinced it uses it that quick. Now, the plants are not going to grow because it's still nowhere near warm enough in here. Chlorine's not brilliant at transferring heat either. So not like hydrogen, which is certainly the best one for that. But we could use hydrogen and make the heat better. But then they wouldn't grow because they need chlorine. So, yeah. Two birds, one stone, and we're just taking our time with this. I will, thinking about it and talking about it now, though I haven't yet even pre-recording, but I am going to upgrade the chlorine level to Atmos suits. The other gases that I'm using, I don't know about the six, the very bottom one, because I've still not got around to that yet, but the other five are all carbon dioxide, um, and that doesn't do any harm to the eyes. So they're fine for gas masks. And then the chlorine one is going to be an Atmos suit, so they don't have to suck up with their eyes as well. And it should make it a lot less painful for when the duplicates want to harvest our food. Which, let's face it, is quite important. At the minute, they're all bombarding in there with that chlorine in there. They're having a really bad day. At least they'll have no infections, because that's what chlorine gets rid of. But yeah, we've got two people suffering from the zombie spores. And I'll be honest, I haven't actually researched how to fix that yet. I have medical base, but their health is 100 out of 100. So it's not the health that's a problem. It may I may need to do the uh, medical station where you can make the tablets. And that might mean that we have to grow crops that I haven't actually grown yet. So we'll see. Uh, again, we can extend this further down. I will move that volcano if I need to. And then the fossil thing that's right below it as well. If I can't move that, I'll just destroy it. Because I'm not that in I'm not that bothered about the fossil, to be honest. So with the heating system in place, we are slowly heating up the chlorine room, as you can see by the overlay there. And we are taking the heat out of that room at the top where you can see it is orange. It's pushing about 45-ish degrees. It's not as hot as I wanted to go, but it's easily hot enough to get the crops growing. So all I have done, that is a water loop, as before, you've seen me do it before. Uh, the liquid goes into that room, and that room is full of the, even through the hydrogen at the top lot. So the whole room is basically covered in a web of radiant pipes. They'll steal the heat from that room. Then it goes down the left-hand side where the doors are, and each floor has its own shut-off valve that is connected to a thermometer. If the temperature is not warm enough, then the shut-off valve opens and lets it go through. Now, all of the floors are fine, apart from the chlorine room, of course. It's at this point I am now going to totally rip out this farm because we no longer need it and I'll use this space for something else. I have no idea what yet. Kind of making it up as I go along. It's how I play. Um, maybe an animal farm because I know that the Draco farm that I've built, I want to make more of those. So, yeah. Um, you can see there's a calling loop in here as well that I am going to rip out shortly too. Just as an overview of the piping for those that are interested, the radiant pipes when you want to heat up the rooms, I've only done it sparsely, sparsely, that's the word. And then behind each one of those is the temp shift towers as well to help push that into the gases. So you can see there. And that pattern there is made up. I just did it to test. Uh, a bit later on, I may need to put a couple more temp shift plates down. But what I do is do that and then leave it to settle and see which bits are colder or warmer. And then I move a temp shift plate to there. If I need another radiant pipe, of course, I can throw one in as well. But either way, I think um, it's going to work nicely for us and give us quite a good range of crops. Right, so with this bed in here, this is my bedroom design that I am going to use. So it covers the bedroom and the bathroom. It's for one person, so every single nugget, no, every single duplicate gets their own sink, shower, and bath uh, and toilet, and then their bed, and it's decorated as much as I can at this time. The bedroom is four blocks wide, which means as soon as I have the plastic, I can upgrade to the better bed, and therefore a better bedroom. Um, but for now, we can only do the cots. Now, all I need to do is blueprint this, and I can then spam that up and down where I need to. 
Then do a mirror image of it and do it on the other side of the tower as well. Uh, I've got 24 duplicates, uh, so I'll build probably 26, 28 bedrooms uh, and get them to do that and then slowly move them into their bedrooms as I go. All I'm going to do is the door that leads into the bedroom, I will restrict to everybody but one duplicate. That will force them then to make that their own bedroom and everything in there will be theirs. It should increase their mood, but it will increase the mood of the entire population as well because every bedroom... Um, which we're going to end up having 26 or 28 is 26 or 28 morale and then the bathrooms count as two each so that's another 28 times two so it's basically 28 times three morale for this setup the commune bathrooms will be ripped out and replaced for bedrooms because every time i build a bedroom you build in a bathroom now the plumbing is a huge job i will do that off camera because what i need to do is let it drain rip out every single pipe and then rebuild it to try and keep it as simple as possible and what i'm actually going to do to make it easier in the future for myself is the clean water pipe i am going to use insulated pipe because it's a bluish color and then for the poop pipe the polluted water i am going to use the normal which is white so at least visually looking at the base i can see the difference between the clean water and the dirty water by white or blue It'll make sense, I hope, nearer the time. I promise. And there we go, super crafting time. I have ripped out all the rooms, took out the wallpapers as well because they were the wrong colour, and all the bedrooms should have the same colour. I might change that at a later date. I am wanting to change the walls as well, but one step at a time, you can see this is a huge task for them to do. As soon as this is done, I will then do the plumbing because that needs to be done ASAP because I've ripped out most of the bathrooms. The remaining bathrooms after that... I will take out and look at making a better hospital and a medicine room, etc. Uh, for the eatery rooms, they are going to have communal ones. I'm not going to give them their own eating table in their bedroom because I'd rather it be all together near the actual food source. I'm going to give them a little bit more bedtime as well and a little bit longer in the bathroom um, so that they get a chance to do everything they need to do. The only time the bathroom is going to be short is the one after they wake up because they're already in their bedroom, so it's right next to them. So that should be easy enough for them to do. I'm trying to make them happy, but also I still need them to do a decent amount of work as well. But I think at this level, and I need to get this, let this finish and then do the plumbing, so we are going to leave it here because we are about at time now. So thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome as always. Even some tips, tricks, or anything you can think of just to let me know uh, that you're liking the way I'm going or if there's something I could do better, please do. Join us on Discord to have a chat outside of the games. Again, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.